In this video, we're going to discover if you can run an engine on anything other than engine oil. So in the yellow engine, we have hydraulic oil. In the red engine, we have EP80W gear oil. And in the green engine, we have our renewable vegetable oil. I think the vegetable oil in particular is going to be very interesting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them all for 60 minutes and we'll see how many, if any, reach the one hour milestone. Also, regardless of the outcome, I would never recommend that you run your engine on anything other than the recommended oil by the engine's manufacturer. To make this test more interesting, I'm going to be collecting some data. So after the first five minutes, I'm going to take a temperature reading of the cylinder and of the exhaust. After that, it'll be every 15 minutes, and I'll be able to compile all these results into a graph, and we'll see which engine was performing the best. For this test, I'm using three of the finest clone engines. Of course, I could not bring myself to use a Briggs & Stratton or Honda engine, but these are new, and that is hopefully gonna give us the most reliable results. So before we do anything else, let's take a look inside the bore of the yellow engine, because that one is the first one which we're gonna test, and then we can do a before and after comparison of the bore after the test. Clean, brand new spark plug. There is a chance the factory has already run this. So let's take a look inside. There's the piston head. You can see there is actually a little bit of scoring on the wall already, but it's not, as I said, it's not a high quality engine, so I'm not really expecting too much from it anyway. Right, so. Now we know what it looks like currently. Let's put the oil in and we'll run it for one hour. So just to show you what hydraulic oil looks like if you're not familiar with it. It does look very similar actually to engine oil. We have the engine on the test stand and I just basically threw this together with a bit of mild steel and an old lawnmower shipping crate. I've got a stopwatch up here so we can, we can time it and we've got the fuel in so we are ready to go. So it will be just a few seconds because I need to obviously start the stopwatch and then start the engine so here we go with this, and now the engine. Well, it made it. And it wasn't smoking at all. However, it was getting hotter as time went on. And I think it was running a bit rougher too. Just checked to make sure it wasn't because it was running out of fuel. Yeah, it's still got plenty in there. 
So let's get the oil drained out and then we can inspect inside the engine. So not great looking oil overall. Of course, this was the first time this engine has ever run, so it will have been breaking all the different components, but there was still a lot of glitter in there, um, despite any kind of wearing in of all the parts. So let's remove the spark plug and we'll put the camera in there and we'll see what it looks like inside the cylinder bore. Well, the spark plug doesn't look too bad. In fact, it looks very clean. And we go with the inspection camera. And well, first impression is not too bad. We do have some scratching to the cylinder wall. Um, there was some scratching already. Yeah, it is scratched. It doesn't look excessively deep. bearing seems fine. I can't see any actual metal chunks in here, it's just, just looks oily. Um, nothing untoward. But what I will do is I'll remove the connecting rod big end and we'll have a look at that. In case you are wondering about the price of this engine, I actually only paid £60, including shipping. And that was new. <laughs> so yeah, they're very, very cheap. Um, but to be fair, it did actually run very smoothly. So if you were running the correct oil in it, then maybe it's a decent engine. Okay, let's have a look at this. Yeah, that actually looks very clean, can't see any gouges or deep scratches, in fact I can't really see any scratches. I can see where it was machined, but that seems pretty good. Maybe I should just use the proper oil to begin with uh, to clean the system out as they are new engines. I don't know, um, but yes, very interesting, that really doesn't look bad at all. An hour, an hour of runtime with hydraulic oil. I've just seen a few flakes of metal back here. A little bit difficult to see. Um, but I think considering this was running on hydraulic oil, not bad. You can really see that the temperature was just gradually increasing as time went on, which is exactly what I'd have expected. There was a strange drop around 45 minutes, but I don't think my infrared thermometer is that accurate. But it doesn't really need to be, because as long as I'm using the same one for all engines, that's fine. Um, and I was just taking the highest reading, uh, despite the fluctuations, it was really fluctuating. So I'll now put this on the screen as a graph, and you can really see how the temperature shot up at the end. That may well have been because of increased friction, because uh, the oil was getting much, much thinner as it was heating up. Um, obviously it's not engine oil, so it doesn't have the properties required to cool the engine effectively. Next up we have the Extreme Pressure ATW gear oil. This is what the gear oil looks like. Much thicker oil, that is the viscosity. Okay, here we go. Gear oil.
The gear oil engine has also made it to one hour. Well, it's already looking very similar to the hydraulic oil. Um, I think the braking procedure is definitely giving it a bit of glitter. But very similar actually, it doesn't really look terrible. All these little air bubbles make you look a bit worse than it actually is. Let's have a look inside the bore. Yeah, there is a bit of oil in here. It was definitely consuming probably a bit more than normal, but the bore looks very similar. It was already really scored. I think the rings have not been deburred, so they have scratched the bore probably as the piston was installed. And the finish on the piston head is not great either. It looks like little shards of metal, um, but I don't think it is. And now we'll have a visual inspection inside the engine and we'll have a look at the big end of the connecting rod. Again, the big end of the connecting rod looks alright. Looks like there is a little bit of scoring there. Again, the gear oil just is not an oil designed for this fast, high temperature running of the engine. With regards to the temperature that it was running at, the cylinder temperature was certainly lower than the hydraulic oil, but the exhaust temperature was very similar. And finally, the one which I've been really looking forward to, vegetable oil. And I chose the cheapest one which I could find. And surprisingly, the cheapest one is 100% rapeseed oil. And it's made from the finest quality seeds. It is suitable for high temperature cooking, including frying, roasting, deep frying, stir fries and engines. Oh, no, sorry, not the last one. Just like the previous two engines, we do have a nice scratch on the bore and also quite a lot of assembly oil in here as well. So it's probably gonna smoke quite a bit once I start it. But yeah, nothing really too surprising in here. Just looks like the other two. So evidently this is, in comparison to the other oils that I've used, like water, this is so thin. This, this actually makes the hydraulic oil look really thick. Um, so yeah, no idea what the outcome is gonna be. So here we go. Starting the timer. Three out of three. So all three have made it to one hour without any problems at all. You can see how thin this oil is, especially when it's hot. And once again, we can see the glitter in there. The spar plug looks quite clean, a little bit of gumminess to it, but still very clean overall. 
Inside the bore looks very similar. Once again, same as the other two engines. Not a lot has really changed in here. One thing which I really did notice when the engine was running was it smelled like fast food. You could definitely smell uh, that it was rapeseed or, or any kind of vegetable. It probably smells the same. Uh, so that was interesting. But we can also see that oil has got past the rings. Again, it doesn't look too bad at all. It seems pretty good. There's definitely more metal filings present inside the engine with this particular oil than the previous two. So the result is actually kind of strange because the engines did run for 60 minutes, all three of them, and I think they would have kept going for a lot longer as well. However, we do still have these metal filings. As mentioned, this is potentially coming from the breaking in process of the engine, but at the same time, uh, some of these are more excessive than others. What I've done is I have compiled all of our cylinder temperatures and the exhaust temperatures into two different graphs, and you can really see the three different results together. So basically, we've got the gear oil, which is very consistent, doesn't really change temperature at all, and that is the lowest of the three for cylinder temperature. And then we have the vegetable oil, which is actually cooler than the hydraulic oil, believe it or not, or very similar. There's not really much in it. But none of them are too far apart. They're all very similar. And yeah, really, this is uh, quite surprising. As for the exhaust temperature, well, this was very different and the range was much wider as well. The hydraulic oil was the coolest for the exhaust temperature, followed by the gear oil, which did start to increase nearer to the end of the test, and the vegetable oil, well, clearly no cooling properties at all there, although it is surprising that the exhaust temperature is so much higher for the vegetable oil compared to the vegetable oil cylinder temperature, because that wasn't really too far away from the others. In fact, it was in the middle. So this is quite an interesting result. But either way, we do have a result, and all three of these engines with these three different oil types survived. So to conclude this video, I would say never use anything but the recommended oil by the engine's manufacturer when you are running an engine. But if it is like a life and death situation, then yes, these three will probably get you out of that tricky situation, whatever it may be, but I do not recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want me to do any more tests with these engines and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.